What you up to now? Day 2153. Sharon Hornell's from here. We're going to talk about being in one's element, water, earth, fire, air, to supersize and grow our business, as well as setting next year's confidence goal. My little buddy's helping me set goals today because sometimes I need a distraction. There's there's way too many things to distract us this time of year. Holidays are just around the corner, and some of us are woefully unprepared. But guess what? It always gets done. One thing I know that I'm in my element when I'm under pressure and time crunches, and I end up figuring out how to get things done, believe it or not, even if I don't think I'm going to get them all done. I selected, and we talked about today for Supersize Your Business, the idiom in one's element or in your element. If you're in your element, you are doing things that flow for you, that feel good to you. And when we do things that feel good to us, guess what? Our confidence increases. What happens when our confidence increases? We get better results because we perform better and more in alignment with who we really are. One of my favorite sayings is be you, or be loving, love being, and be you. It's, it's kind of been my motto since my sudden cardiac arrest is uh, I found that a lot of the times I was being me, but I was only being a very small percentage of who I really am as a human being. And so I wasn't bringing all of myself to what I was doing, whether it was, you know, relationships, activities, businesses, et cetera. Just a portion of me was showing up in different situations. And I realized that's because I was doing things that didn't feel awesome or right or flow for through me. And I'm a water sign. So flow is very, very important to me. Uh, I don't know what it is for you. Again, there are, are four different signs and they happen to line up with human beings, astrological, uh, you know, what your signs, your horoscopes and signs and things. Uh, I, I never really studied much of that. I don't know much about it. I did read my horoscope when I was younger because I thought it was really interesting. But water, earth, fire, and air are the different signs, um, you know, and there's three of each. And not only was everything during the Elizabethan period divvied up into both physical and non-physical things were divided into the four different signs. And uh, that's how everything was categorized back then. Uh, still a lot of that today, right? A lot of the different ways of categorizing things have come and still find a way to align with these four areas or these four things. So we talked about that today. And how do you use that? How do you get in the flow for you? How do you be consistent with who you are as you grow and build your business? As well as how do we use that information knowing that people are different to give customers the best possible experience, to make sure that we're meeting their needs and serving them to the best of our ability so that we can be in the flow and supersize and grow our business. Uh, our topic today for the Get Your Goals Annual Challenge and our assignment is to set next year's confidence goals. Why? Because we want to start next year off really, really ahead of the game by not waiting until after the first of the year to set our goals. We want to set them now so that we can let them ruminate for a week or so. So that when first starts, we're ready to go. We don't have to think about it. We don't have to go back and review. We don't have to set those goals. We've got them set and we're ready to start the year off with a bang. We're ready to really flow and go into next year to create whatever it is that we want in our life. So today we're focusing on the area of confidence and we followed a Again, our eight-step process, what area are we working on, what are uh, our core values in that area, what are our thoughts, beliefs, feelings, our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, our SWOT analysis of that of confidence. Then we think about what is our biggest challenge to our confidence right now. And then after that, we brainstorm then. That helps us to identify where we are, and then we think about what we want. And by thinking about where we want to be, you know, long term and then at the end of next year, that's how we brainstorm goals to help us achieve that. And then we rate and rank and analyze and compare those things after we brainstormed our list and we pick our top three. If we pick more than three in nine areas of our life, that gets to be really cumbersome. And tomorrow, even though we're going to do the lifeline exercises part of the challenge, I also want to spend some time saying, okay, how do we take these 27 goals that we've put together, how do we merge them together and simplify them? So we're really working on a handful of goals next year as our primary focus and driver. And then the other things we'll fill in as little action steps and ancillary things by doing one little thing every day 
it'll move us toward all of those 27 goals versus thinking, oh my God, I have 27 things and what are the steps and strategies and, and smart goals for each of those 27 things? Because I don't know about you, but that's too many for me these days. The older I get, the less I want to be working on 27 things and I want to be working on three to five things that I know are the big domino things that if I knock them down and if I achieve them, all the other things come right along with them. All right. That's all I've got. I am, like I said, way behind on the holiday plans. So I've got a ton of things to do between now and Christmas and between now and the new year. But if I can help you anyway, if you got a quick question, if you have a not so quick question, let's get you a quick answer to keep you moving forward. And then we'll figure out after the first of the year how to really, really set you up for success and, and move forward. I'm here to help you do that. All you have to do is ask. All right. Have an awesome day. And I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow.